Aries, welcome to the realm of astrology. This is your monthly horoscope for August 2021. But before we begin, I would like to let you know that I also do daily horoscope videos, weekly horoscope videos, and monthly sunrise and sign horoscope videos that you can watch on my YouTube channel. I also request you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be notified every time I post a video. Now, Aries, the month of August is an extremely intense one. And it is going to feel like a lot of changes need to be made, a lot of decisions need to be taken. So the overall energy of August is very, very intense. And in this video, I'm going to break down the most important events in the month of August for you. And if you want a more detailed breakdown, you can watch my monthly video. And for an even more detailed breakdown, you can watch my daily videos. So let's talk about the most important event one of the most important events which happens on August 8th and that is the new moon in the sign of Leo. It's happening at about 16 degrees of Leo which makes it in your fifth house. And a new moon typically brings with it new beginnings. And for you in your fifth house Aries, this beginning is connected to your children, love, romance, hobbies, fun, creativity, pleasure, all these things. There's a new beginning in that area, a beginning that you will work on and build for the next 28, 30 days till the new moon next month in September. Now, what I'd like to point out is that this new moon is in opposition to Saturn, right? Saturn is an Aquarius opposing the Leo energy. So what this means, Saturn is a planet of hard work, decisions, discipline. It can even bring with it delays and disappointments. So what this means is that this new moon, this new beginning in your house of love, romance, children, creativity, hobbies, fun, pleasure will be there, but it might require you to work hard, might require you to be disciplined or take certain decisions, or it might even feel like that this beginning is not happening the way you want it to happen. And don't worry, Aries, this is not just for you. Everybody is going to face the Saturn opposition, right? So I just thought I'd mention that, that this new beginning, this new moon on August 8th might feel a little challenging because Saturn is in the opposite sign, make, asking the question, are you working hard enough? It can even bring delays. So that's something to watch out for. Now, the next important thing, Aries, happens on August 11th, and Mercury is going to change signs. Mercury right here is going to leave your fifth house and enter your sixth house. Now, Mercury is our mental energy. It's our mind. It's our communication. It's also our day-to-day -day routine, habits, and environment, right? So when Mercury changes signs, and in this case, it'll change houses for you, Aries, it is going to divert or the focus of your mental energy, of your mind, your thinking, your communication is going to shift from children, love, romance, creativity to health and job and day-to-day -day routine. You could even be focused on diet, exercise, etc. And that's because Mercury is going to leave your fifth house and enter your sixth house. So till Mercury enters the sign of Libra, which will happen on August 30th. So for 20 days, starting on August 11th to about August 30th, you will be more focused on health, job, diet, day-to-day -day routine, exercise, habits, these sort of things for the next uh, 20 days concerning your mental energy, concerning your thinking, your thought processes, your communication, all that stuff. And then on August 15th, Aries, we have the first quarter square of the moon. Now, a first quarter square is when the sun and the moon make their first 90 degree angle. Now, this is a point where challenges can come up, where we might need to resolve some um, issues, overcome some obstacles, make changes, make adjustments connected to the new moon that happened on August 8th, which for you was in your fifth house connected to love, romance, children, creativity, hobbies, etc. Right? So this whole week, starting on August 15th, you might be making certain changes to that beginning. You know, if you've taken up a creative project, for example, you'll be assessing what is the best way to go about this project. Or if you're running up, running into some issues connected to that creative project, then, you know, you may just resolve it this week. So that's the energy, overcoming small, I don't want to say small, but overcoming obstacles that were that's, that are connected to the new moon. 
And soon after this, on August 16th, Venus is going to enter the sign of Libra. Okay, it's going to enter your seventh house, and this is a good thing. And because Venus loves Libra, right, it rules the sign of Libra, so it works very well there. And Venus has been in Virgo for quite some time, and it will be for half of the month in August, right? So till 16th August, the blessings, the gifts, all that you're going to receive because of Venus are connected to your health, job, diet, exercise, day-to-day -day routine, right? But from August 16th, there's going to be a shift in Venus's energy and you are going to be more receptive to and receive gifts and blessings connected to your legal relationships. Now, this includes your marriage. This includes your spouse. This, in this can even include your in-laws or business partners or legal relationships. Venus is going to come in and bless that area of your life, even make you more receptive to that area of your life. And... On August 19th, Aries, we have Uranus going retrograde. It's going to go retrograde in your second house. And Uranus is the last outer planet to go retrograde. And what I mean by this is that at this point, Pluto is retrograde, Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, Chiron, and now Uranus will be retrograde. And retrograde means a review process, right? A review period. We are reviewing the past, the recent past. So a lot of the events that you're seeing right now, we've seen glimpses of them before. We've been through them before. But now is the time to approach them with a different perspective. Retrogrades are also a time of karma, karmic uh, rewards for the work we've done or sometimes the work we haven't done. And that's, in that case, in that case, it's a feeling of, oh, I should have done that, right? So... Uranus is going to go retrograde and in your second house, what is Uranus doing? Let's talk about that for a moment. Uranus is a planet that wants you to be your authentic self. That's what it wants the most, among other things. And for that reason, it can bring things into your life and get rid of things, right? And it can do this quite suddenly. So in your second house, second house is about money. It's about finances. It's about your material possessions. It's also the house of self-worth, values, and skills. So it could be, these are just examples. It could be there's a skill that will help you become your authentic self. Then Uranus will get that into your life, right? Or if the way you approach your own self-worth is not that great, then Uranus might say, hey, you need to change the way you approach your self-worth. And I'm going to help you. And suddenly you'll start to feel better about your self-worth. So that's how Uranus functions and the energy is unexpected, it's sudden. So now when it will go retrograde on August 19th, that this is the part that you will start to review along with all the other planets. And if you want to know what the long-term energies in your chart are, Aries, things like where Saturn is, where Uranus is, where Neptune, Pluto, all these planets are and what they mean, you can watch my long-term video which should be out and if it's not out already it will be out soon and that video talks about the energies you're dealing with for a longer period of time say years on end for example saturn can stay in a sign or a house right saturn is here and can stay in a sign or a house for three years so for those three years certain themes in your life will be consistent although astrology will change day to day week to week month to month that Saturn placement is not going to change for three years. It is going to be in your house for about two and a half, three years, that particular house. Meaning it's going to ask you to work on a particular area of your life for those two and a half, three years. So things like that. That video talks about that. So if you're interested, it should be out. If it's not, it will be out very soon. Now getting back to this. So we've covered Uranus as well. Now, the most important event in the month of August happens on 22nd. And that is the full moon in Aquarius. It's happening at 29 degrees. So it puts it about right here, 29 degrees, and right here, okay? So it makes it your 11th in your fifth house, Aries. So what are full moons? Full moons are moments of clarity, of being able to see things clearly. There are also culmination points, completion points, points of understanding. And... This full moon is a very special full moon because it's happening in the sign of Aquarius and 
that's usually not a very special thing, but it's special this year because we have two full moons in Aquarius this year. One happened last month on July 23rd and one's happening this month. So that tells me that this full moon is special. Typically, we'll have one full moon in Aquarius in the whole year, right? So that's something to think about. Now, this full moon is bringing to light a few things. The first is it is helping us understand the new beginning that happened on August 8th. And for you, Aries, that was connected to children, love, romance, creativity, hobbies, fun, pleasure. Okay. And now you're able to make more sense of that beginning, see it more clearly. The second thing, which is more important in my opinion, is you're able to see a new beginning that started in December of 2020, that happened in at zero degrees of Aquarius. So I'm going to take that to be your 11th house, okay? But check your chart to know that zero degrees of, where zero degrees of Aquarius is. That's where your beginning happened. So, this, new, this full moon will help us understand what that beginning in December of 2020 was. And in your 11th house, it was connected to the groups that you belong to, the acquaintances that you keep, your social circle, not your close friends, but you know, your acquaintances, that sort of energy, or the social organizations you're a part of. This house has a lot to do with hopes, goals, and dreams in the future as well. So something connected to that, or if science, tech, applies to you than something in that area Aries. You're able to understand that beginning more clearly now. So that's August 22nd and on the same day the sun is going to enter the sign of Virgo meaning it's going to leave your fifth house and enter your sixth house. Now Aries I had said in the beginning of the video that this month is very intense and one of the reasons was because the sun was in Leo. Typically the sun loves to be in Leo, it rules Leo, but the sun in Leo is opposing the energy of Saturn. And that's not easy, that's intense, right? So on, on one hand we want to follow our heart, do what makes us happy, go after what we love, but on the other hand Saturn is there saying, hey, I know you want to do what you love, but what about the long term? Is it, an, is it in alignment with your long term? So there was this tug of war going on between these two planets, right? But now the sun's moved on into the sign of Virgo on August 22nd, and that intensity of August will begin to ease off. Now, till August 22nd, the sun has been illuminating and highlighting children, romance, love, creativity, hobbies, fun, pleasure in your life. But from August 22nd, the focus is going to shift to your health, job, day-to-day -day routine, habits, exercise and diet, if that applies to you. So that's August 22nd and towards the end of the month, Mercury is going to enter your seventh house. Now you're going to be thinking about, communicating about your legal relationships, marriage, spouse, business partnerships, all those sorts of things. Okay, that's August 30th. And on the same day, we have the last quarter square. If the moon begin. This is the last time the sun and the moon make their 90 degree angle before the new moon next month. And this whole week starting on August 30th, the focus is going to be release. Letting go of what of the beginning that you had on August 8th, connected to love, romance, children, creativity, hobbies, fun, pleasure. This week you'll be assessing, yeah, I had that new beginning. What about that beginning can I let go? It could even be an emotion. What about that emotion in my love life? What emotions are not serving me in my love life? What do I need to let go of? That's the energy. And letting go and release can feel a little difficult. And the week before the new moon, which will happen next month, and especially the two, two, three days before the new moon, can feel very low in energy. So I'm just mentioning that to you, Aries. So that's the basic overview of the month of August for you Aries I will pick a card for you but again if you want to know where things like Saturn, Pluto, Neptune all those things are then you can watch my long-term video it should be out if it's not it will be out very soon so overall Aries there's a lot of focus in your fifth house and sixth house and somewhat in your seventh house meaning the focus this month is going to be about creativity love, romance, children, hobbies, pleasure, also your health, your job, your routine, your diet and nutrition as well. And towards the end of the month, the focus will begin to shift towards your marriage, legal relationships, 
business partnerships, all that sort of stuff. And Aries, this is for an Aries rising or an Aries sun and prefer, preference given to your rising sign and then sun sign. And if you are, say, a 29 degree Aries, right, then you might just resonate more with a Taurus reading. And if you are someone with very large houses, very small houses, you know, that will throw this reading off because the planets will be placed in a different house for you. So keep that in mind. And this is just a basic overview. It's very, very basic. So I just wanted to mention that. And now I will pick a card for you. Okay. It says imagine. I think this card fits in very well with you, Aries, because the fifth house, I said the focus is creativity. I think this month you will have to be very creative and open up to that creativity and imagine. Imagine all the possibilities. But I think this imagination is not like think bigger, think better, imagine all that could be. It might be, but to me, this is more about being creative. Imagine. Tap into your imagination. Tap into your creativity this month, Aries. So that's all that I'm going to say for you, Aries. Do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, and I will see you in one of my other videos. Have a great month, Aries. Bye.